Hi, and welcome to Out West. I wanted to talk a little bit about advertising. I've noticed advertising has changed a lot over the years, and I'm sure you've noticed it too. Lately, I've noticed that some advertising has included gay and lesbian imagery, which is good. It shows progress. I found some ads online I wanted to share with you. Most of these ads are, of course, European, because as a whole, the Europeans have learned to pull the stick out of their ass and have a much more mature attitude about sex and sexuality. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Carl, and I just want to take care of you. I'm Jürgen. I serve as hard. I can get you off first thing in the morning. Heathrow, Gatwick. I go both ways. I'm direct. I'm not into stopovers, but I will do the red eye. Pick me if you have a tight budget. I have a full range of films if you like to watch. I'm very exclusive. Very accommodating. I can go up to 12 hours without feeling tired. So just recline and let me service you. Hot towel, hot towel. Travelocity. Come on, mate. You're definitely getting checked out. I am. I am. Come on, now's your chance. I guess it's now or never. Exactly. What could go wrong? Here, have a Pepsi Max. Right, let's do this. strange enchanted boy they say he wandered very far very far over land and sea a little shy and sad of eye but very wise was he And then one day, a magic day, he passed my way. And while we spoke of many things, fools and kings, this he said to me. The greatest thing is just to love. And be loved in return. February and I was like hey do you want to jump in the Atlantic Ocean with me today <laughs> and she was like yeah what? let's go jump in 30 degree water I like that very adventurous, <laughs> adventurous. I'm like completely attracted 
to Kelly. I think she's totally <laughs> my type. She's stunning. I call her a fox. And there was this group who put together their favorites in honor of Gay Pride Month. Soldado 58! Senhor! Sim, senhor! Escuta bem o que eu vou te falar! Nós nascemos um para o outro! Eu posso fazer você muito feliz! Eu quero passar o resto da minha vida com você! Juntos! Juntos! Mundo agora! Como dois pombinhos! Vivendo a magia do amor! Uma loucura, 58! Eu te amo, entendeu? Senhor! Sim, senhor! Venda! 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 Uno de cada diez hombres argentinos es gay. Gay. Animal gay. Uno de cada diez. Uno de cada diez hombres. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Uno, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Ocho, nueve, ocho, diez. Opa. Fernet Sinsano, pero me pueden decir Fernet. One of the first rules in advertising is that sex sells. And that's obvious in these ads, especially when you're advertising lubricating gel and condoms. But I will admit they're pretty clever. 
And as far as that first ad with the uh, flight, uh, the flight attendants, it may seem a little stereotypical, but as is true with any stereotype, each one of them has a bit of truth in them. I've been gay for a long time, and I can personally say I've met every one of those kind of guys. I think what I really want to see in advertising is images of us, gays and lesbians, in a nice normal setting where they would show a nice family around a dinner, tale, um, a t a dinner table, a mommy, a daddy, and their kids. Why don't we try once having two guys who are raising kids? They're out there. How about a picture of two women and their kids? Or even a couple without any kids? That would make me more likely to buy whatever product you're trying to sell if I can see people like me in the advertising. I also wanted to touch on print media for a little bit because national magazines, especially gay and lesbian magazines, were struggling in the beginning trying to find national advertisers who were willing to advertise in their magazines. They were stuck with just specifically gay-owned businesses. Magazines like The Advocate and Out Magazine and on the women's side, Bitch Magazine and on a local level, Echo Magazine. I've seen personally how Echo Magazine has grown their advertising amazingly and gotten some great national advertising because companies know that we as a people spend our money we spend it a lot we have apparently a higher discretionary income and they want that money very badly recently ray and i attended an event at dinnerware art gallery called free sex 3. here are some clips of that event
But no, it's not like that. We're just telling you, be free in your sexuality. Be a part of that part. And that's really what I have to my attention because I don't really get to be involved with shows like this. And it really was about the art, about the visual, about just freeing your mind, getting on stage, and letting your body take over. That's what it was all about. So it's and not I'm explaining it while I'm with my crop. It's not okay that I was already handing sex out earlier? Or? <laughs> well, no, that was okay. That's why we invited you. Okay. Right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, without this next person, we would not be here. It was his idea. He is the brainchild behind the operation. And he was the one that came to me and said, we would really like you to be a part of this. Because, um, well, honestly, I don't know why they have me here. But still. Um, I love him so much. Give it long and hard, just like he likes it. Oscar Jimenez! But um, there was a lot of heart here. These folks worked really hard for many weeks um, in putting the show together. Very grassroots, very guerrilla style. Um, they were amazing, and I love them all. And hopefully, uh, you'll come back and follow us as we put on more shows. We're currently working on a very special and sexy midnight show. Would you be willing to yeah. come over on um, the midnight to see a very sexy, yeah. spicy show? In the past, I've shared with you some videos from the It Gets Better project. I found a video from the employees of Apple Incorporated, and I thought you should see it. I also found a video from a woman who I really respect and admire, a great ally to the gay community, Margaret Cho. I knew from my earliest memory that I was gay. I was, you know, kind of a loner growing up. I was very awkward. Called every name in the book. They'd say fag or nerd, egghead. You know, like this, like that. You know, people walking by calling me a waste. Yeah, the mainstream didn't want us. I mean, high school's kind of shitty. I mean, it's like... Just there being no allowance for someone to be different. There were, you know, definitely nights those years where I would go to sleep and just be like, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to wake up in the morning. I just wanted to curl up in a dark corner somewhere and hope that it all went away. I felt tired. Really tired. When I, I was around eight, um, I told my pediatrician that um, I wanted to be a girl. It made me feel uh, even more determined to hide that part of myself away because the message I was getting is, you know, that's disgusting. You have all these uh, feelings that you can't necessarily talk about with somebody. You know, and you're looking for that acceptance and you don't always get it. As much as my parents love me, there's always that possibility that... that the two people that mattered most in my life wouldn't accept me for who I am. And I had this, this kind of story in my mind that everyone was going to lash out at me and they were going to be mad and they were going to say, oh, you're going to hell. And when I thought about that, I became very depressed and I had actually contemplated suicide. Why am I like this? I wish I wasn't. I um, uh, found a bottle of sleeping pills in my parents' medicine cabinet and took them. All of them. Just a few moments before I lost consciousness, I had a fleeting moment where I thought, if it does get better and I'm gone, then I've really screwed up. Every day is worth waking up for. You never know what's going to happen. Life changes so much. When I finally did come out uh, and start to transition, I realized I'd been hiding a huge part of myself. And it just came out. I said, I'm gay. It feels like a weight has been lifted off your shoulders. And that was just incredibly liberating. I'm finally me. No way would I not want to be who I am because my uniqueness is my strength. It's what differentiates me from other people. To finally be open and honest with who I am, what I want out of life, and. To my surprise, it was probably one of the best things that I'd ever done. You feel every sense of freedom and um, every sense of this is what life is all about.
Summer days at the park where all your friends are there and going on a long run when no one else is on the street. The thrill of, of discovering what your career is or even just being here to see the sunset or the sunrise. I have people I really enjoy talking with, being with, doing stuff. Enjoying the riches of life. That's, that's the stuff that people shouldn't miss out on. Falling in love and having a partner of almost 14 years. We both play the piano. Um, he plays the viola. And someone who every night you want to say, um, I love you and I hope you sleep well. That feeling of connecting to someone so deeply. And sometimes I still shake my head, think I'm, it's, I'm dreaming, because it's, it got so much better than, that I ever thought it would be possible. Just, there's no way that anyone can really, really explain that to you until you really feel it. But if you're not around, you, you won't. Don't try to do everything yourself. Find people who can help you if you can. As difficult as it might seem, open up with somebody and just tell them what you're feeling. You have to be open to people who even look like they might be your friend. They're friends. You're not alone. You're not alone. The bullies seem like the powerful people and the successful people. And the secret of the real world is they're at the peak of their power at 15 and 16. And there will come a time when the bullies are not successful and the people they bullied are. And you just have to out-survive them. They don't know you. They don't know who you are or what you love or anything about you. Know that there's nothing wrong and there's people out there just like you. Please consider that time times changes a whole outlook no matter who you are or where you live or what you have swirling around you that space that you're in that time is this much in the course of life and as we go through our lives we're going to have friends we're going to have family but they're not always there and in that toughest darkest moment if we can rely on ourselves, that's more than we will ever need to face the world. Hi, this is Margaret Cho. I want to talk to all the gay teens out there who feel alone, who feel bullied, who feel like taking their own life might be an answer. Well, it's not. It's not. I want to tell you that you're not alone, and I was bullied so much when I was a kid, and so much as a teenager, and there were many, many times that I wanted to take my own life. But don't do it. We need you. The world cannot go on without you. Stay with us. We love you so much. October is a very busy month in Tucson for the LGBT community, and I wanted to make sure I reminded you of all the events that you need to attend this coming October. On Saturday, October 8th at 8 o'clock, down on Congress Street, we have our annual Pride Parade. And then the next Saturday, the 15th, at 11 a.m., the gates open at Kino Memorial Stadium for our Pride in the Desert. It's a new venue, it's a new place, it's gonna be bigger and better, and I want you all to be there, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And then Sunday, the next day, Sunday, October 16th, is our annual AIDS Walk, benefiting Southern Arizona AIDS Foundation. You can get all the information on the Pride Parade and Pride in the Desert at TucsonPride.org. And more information about the AIDS Walk at the University of Arizona at safe.org. I look forward to seeing you at all these events. You rise to me, our precious stones on a face made of solid gold when I hold